Hi, so I'll share with you what I did when I first started learning Japanese and what I would do differently. I've studied for about a year and a half and I would say I'm around an N4 level. If I did some things differently, maybe I could have been around N3 by now. When I first started, I learned hiragana and katakana which is what I think everybody should do, but the way I did it was really inefficient. I think they learn a i u e o ka kiku ke ko in Japan, and that's kind of what I did. Like that part was fine for me, that worked, but what I did was I wrote a i u e o to fill out an entire page, and then the next day I would write ka kiku ke ko and write out an entire page and then arbitrarily write a i u e o as well. So this took like an hour, and I did this for hiragana and katakana. So that was like 15 days or something. It was extremely tedious and not fun at all. And honestly, I can't even write hiragana or katakana now anyway. I don't really have much of a need to right now because I don't live in Japan. So it's fine. Like I can read it perfectly and I can type it just fine. But I think I spent way too much time writing out characters in the beginning when I could have just used like a flashcard app. Which is also something I did, like I had like a hiragana memorizer app. It was like a game, so like what would happen was like they would have a character like new come down and then you would just click like a thing at the bottom to say new and you just paired them together and it's like okay this is the new character, this is the ma character, etc. So I think that app is more beneficial, more time time efficient and probably a more fun way to study than just writing it over and over again. So I did both of these but I would recommend just unless you think you need to write or you think writing helps you memorize it better I would recommend just using the app and then pairing the reading with the character because you have to memorize it in the beginning because you just don't know it or you can't really learn it from context. So. I personally find that just using the app and pairing the reading is better than writing it over and over again. Uh, for vocabulary, I actually already knew like maybe a hundred words because I watched so much anime before I seriously studied Japanese. So I just knew words already like nani, <laughs> kimi, anata, etc. I wouldn't really say I ever used a textbook outside of one. I went to the library and I picked up a textbook that was like the first 100 kanji and I was like okay I'll memorize this but my idea of memorizing it was doing what I did for hiragana and katakana so I got really tired really quickly so all I really took from that textbook was 1 through 10 and then the, char the characters that seemed the most interesting to me at the time which was like the ones for day so I had like kaiyobi, suiyobi, etc. Like I, I, I memorized the characters for like wind, fire, water, earth, heaven, etc. Uh, weak here, something like that. Uh, I found that pretty helpful actually. And those are pretty common characters. I also did chunking, but I, I mainly just watched like videos to learn some vocabulary. Like when I learned how to say the days of the week. Like I just watched a video and then I made like a little song to say each day of the week in Japanese. And I just did this several times, like just throughout the day until I just had it memorized. It took me a while before I actually started doing flashcards, but I would say that chunking in the beginning was quite helpful and it definitely worked for me. Something else that I did while learning vocabulary was I would just find the word and then I would go on tandem and I would just put the word in and then see kind of what would happen and how the person would react. And actually, I think for the simple words or the words in the beginning, like it pretty much always worked as a direct translation. For example, like, what are your hobbies? Shumi wa nan desu ka? It's pretty much the exact same thing. You just have to learn the grammar. But even if your grammar was wrong, like people would just kind of correct you and let you know. Like if I was going to ask someone a question about like what their favorite food is, you'd say like, skina tabemono wa nan desu ka? Skina tabemono ga nan desu ka? Like you know what, even right there I'm not confident. Is it a wa or a ga? I don't remember. Because like I've seen wa and I've seen ga, so I actually have no idea. So 
ga sounds better maybe, but maybe it's wa too, I don't know. So that's also something that probably slowed my progress down a bit. I still don't really have great understandings of the grammar, which is something that I think you can learn better in textbooks. So either taking like a real Japanese class, which is something I did actually do at my school, which did help me too, because I was able to like ask the teacher questions about specific nuances and say, oh, is this the word for this, etc. Like that's useful. And then speaking to people in Japanese, like if you have a club at your school or a meetup event where you could meet people and practice, that's great. If you can't do that or you don't have time for that, you can use tandem. This will let you like text people or call them. Like I do like two or three weekly calls in Japanese. I've done this for about a year. There is about three months, give or take, where I just didn't study Japanese at all. So obviously that means I made no progress during that time. So try not to burn out, do things that are fun, and, and do things that make you feel like you're making progress. Especially because it was my first language to learn. Like, I mean, I speak English, <laughs> but it was my first second language to learn. It was like new and interesting, so even though some things were kind of boring, or tedious in the beginning, I was still having fun doing it. So I think like you'll have an initial burst of motivation, but maybe it slows down a little bit after. Nowadays, my pronunciation's also not really the best, and I don't have the best pitch accent. So some people tell me my pronunciation's okay, but then other people tell me that I have a pretty strong English accent, which is fair. Like, ideally, I don't really want to have the accent because it'll just make me easier to understand. But at the end of the day, I think being able to convey yourself is better. Like, that's the most important part. Like, if you can convey what you want to convey and you're understood, that's pretty much the main goal of language anyway, I think. But that's pretty much all I did in the beginning and the things that I wouldn't recommend that you do. And as for what I already do now, I posted in my other video, so you could watch that if you like. And I think for me, that's working pretty well, but I think what I really need to do next is get more vocabulary, better pronunciation, and improve my grammar as well. And because I want to write the N4 test, I need to study the layout of the test more too. So that's all there is for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it interesting or motivating or something like that. So see you later. Bye.